What's going on YouTubers, gamers and fellow hobbyists, welcome to this episode of Hobby 1 to 1 and this is all about base coating. Now I'm going to use this particular miniature for this example which I got free from Salute a few years ago actually, it was the free miniature. And so yeah, so I've already primed it as you can see and there he is, ready to go. So base coating and base paints, um, this is going to be a method of uh, base coating painting I use and you, you know you're welcome to do this so in this series we'll be looking at painting the whole miniature using the methods um, I'm going to lay out for you the first one um, of the actual painting um, stages is the base painting uh, so first you want to select the sort of base paints you want or you think you'll need if it, unless you're following of course like a, a model say from games workshop or something and you're following a, a specific color scheme or you happen to know what exact colors you want sometimes you'll find hmm, you might need an extra one or two uh, base colors so one method is this and that is to lay down all your base coats first now some companies do their own like a series of paints and they'll call them like for instance the three in the middle there are citadel paints and they do base colors um, they also do layer paints and dry paints and you know edge highlight paints and all these other sorts of, of paints the base paints usually are thicker in pigmentation than the others some companies have a sort of uh, triad system that they use um, the ones on the outside or towards the outside are, are P3 paints and of course I've got the Vallejo one on the end but to, the truth of the matter is you can use any type of paint um, for your base color you know if it's the color you want um, you're just gonna have to make sure that you fin it down adequately and um, I'll, I'll come on to that um, as you will see but yes yeah, so uh, don't be put off by uh, the names I mean in the olden days they used to be called foundation paints I think they are they still are in some uh, systems you have like a base paint one and then the edge paint or the layer paint and the edge paint uh, but there's so many more things to do but the base painting is the first of the stages we're going to be completing so like I say just get the colors you think you'll need so I started with these four uh, another fact that the Citadel ones are actually base paints doesn't make matter it's neither here nor there uh, the base colours are always darker than your overall effect you want. Uh, I'm going for Bugman's Glow on the left there, that's a good skin uh, tone base colour. The Rhinox Hind for leather effects. Uh, I think that was called Blood Tracker Brown, uh, but it was for my wood effects, that's a bit lighter again. And then of course the Lead Belcher at the end, which is a good nice dark metallic silver um, for the metals. So as I say, um, each stage, after, well, each stage of paints will actually lighten them up. So we're starting with Bugman's Glow. So this is going on all the skin areas. Now I recommend uh, you work from the inside out, but before we do that, we're gonna thin down the paints. Now you're gonna need to do this for each paint you use. Uh, so I'm just showing you quickly how to do that if you haven't done that before. So for Bugman's Glow, I take a little dollop of Bugman's Glow and I put it in my little milk bottle top, which I'm just using as a, a mini palette, just for the purpose of this. I do use them quite a bit. Bit of water to thin it down with. That way it doesn't obscure any detail and you don't get those horrible brush strokes on it makes it look horrible and glooped on. Uh, you want a couple of uh, thin uh, layers on there or a couple of thin coats as Duncan from GW would say. You want that kind of sort of consistency there. All right, otherwise some paints you'll find are thicker than others but that's just something you'll have to come to um, discover for yourself. And so and so we literally start from the inside out. So there's only a couple of areas, his face and his hands. So we'll be starting with those. So just get, put it on nice and uh, evenly. Like I say, it's only the face and hands on this one. And once you've done it, wait for it to dry um, completely before doing the second coat. Sometimes you won't need a second coat. Uh, don't make the mistake of not thinning down your paint though to try and save time. It, it really doesn't work. All well, that way it does end up looking quite bad if you do that. So uh, put it on, wait for it to dry and do a second coat. 
And if you need to do more coats because you've, you've thinned the paint down too much, so be it. I mean, that, that doesn't matter too much, but there you go. That's how it should look. So for this next stage, I'm going with Rhinox Hide. It's a lovely dark brown and will formulate the perfect uh, base color for leather. Um, and here's leather armor. Again, I'm going to thin the paint down as I will with all of the paints. Like I say, it's a bit hit and miss uh, because all the, all the, every paint from every manufacturer, even in the same company, different colors are different in terms of pigmentation and the, um, the way they behave. But you, that is something you will get to learn, um, get used to. For instance, the Rhinox Hide, although it's a base color, it's, it's not that heavy on pigmentation, not as much as you would, you would expect. So you don't need to thin it down quite so much, I found. But again, it's the same sort of consistency as with the Bugman's Glow, and then you just put a couple of layers on to give it a nice even coverage. And of course, the beauty of going inside out is it makes it easier to correct mistakes. So if I went over his hand, say for instance, with the brown, it would be no problem at all just to go back over it with the Bugman's Glow to neaten it up a bit. So once you've done that and let that one dry let your colors dry thoroughly in between each stage because you don't want the colors running into one another so there you go now lead belcher is next for the metal now this is a, a metal pigmented uh, um, color so i'm going to be thinning it down with something called thinners not water although you can use water to thin it down um obviously i'm going over the metal areas but there you go i'm just using airbrush thinner by vallejo that seems to work quite well um, there are other things you can use to thin down uh, metallics, but uh, that's also another video. So here I'm just going over all the metal parts, or all the parts I want to be metal. Um, obviously the helmet um, and the um, the axe and the, the hammer thing he's holding. Sometimes it's not altogether clear what parts are actually meant to be metal. Sometimes it's a bit ambig uh, you know, ambiguous as to whether something should be uh, metallic or not. But I usually find once, once you get your metallics on, the model really starts to like leap forward in terms of, uh, you know, coming on towards completion. Although we've only just started this model, it's true, but it, it certainly does take a big step forward uh, in terms of looking good. And it's something I would like to, to, to do if I couldn't finish a model, but I wanted it on the, the tabletop, for instance. But, um, so I, yeah, so I looked back under and I decided that um, it was a bit ambiguous as to whether the part underneath his chin was metal as well, I decided it would be, so I painted it in. Lead Belcher is a lovely uh, base metallic. I find it, it covers beautifully and doesn't leave any streaks. Okay, so there's the metal. Next I'm going for Battle Dress Green by P3. And for his um, trouser legs or pants, um, whatever you call them, I decided this was a, a great uh, green to use. So it would, it would blend in well with the browns and it will do later on as well. Of course, I'll be highlighting it slightly but again, we'll come to that at a later stage. So I'm just doing these. The only thing I need to be wary of and careful of is not going over any previous colors that I've already done. So I don't have to be quite so finicky with like anything that's lower down. That's another way of painting a, a miniature like this. You can go top down or bottom up. Uh, I like to go inside out and top down as much as I can. Next, Blood Tracker Brown for all the wood areas I want on the model. Uh, so this piece of wood that the axe is in. And I did, of course, I did the arrows and uh, such like in the quiver, but I did those kind of off camera because, I mean, they're really not, the, they're just like base um, effects really. Well, this, this is as well, but um, uh, it wasn't on the actual miniature itself. So, uh, that's just another effect to apply. Right, next is Burnt Red by Vallejo Model Color. And really is a beautiful color. This is for the little, um, like I don't know, like cloth things around his knees. 
but it goes on um, brighter than it dries obviously uh, it dries almost brown it's almost a brown so I figured this would be a good um, color to add it's a, it's a red but it's so close to a brown that it's um, inconsequential as to um, confusing things so it would be fine at that so I think this adds to it uh, like I said I don't know what they're for but they needed it just needed breaking up anyway uh, you could make them into the top of boots, but I thought that would look a bit daft. So we've got those on there. Now, Rakar Flesh is next. Now I use this to paint the the like the cover of the, the quiver for the arrows and the little pouch he's got on his belt. Uh, although I'm going off camera there. I mean the majority of this, which is the quiver, is on the base anyway, as you can see there. I'm, it's like I say it's base features and should really come under basing um, but you know happen to be base painting and so I, I figured might as well do it now and um, there's a little pouch on his side there is actually a little dagger protruding through it which I'll I'll fill in after I've done uh, subsequent um, stages of painting so that's something I want to talk about as well. I'm going to use that as a um, as a sort of subject to talk about for, for layering or highlighting or whatever. So there we go. Just base coating. And we're approaching the end of this uh, stage now. Not much more to do. Chaos Black, or you can use any black, Abaddon Black, um, or any like Vallejo Black, whatever black you got. I'm just, uh, I, I use black sometimes to do boots or shoes and belts and straps on models such as this so I'm just going around uh, doing his boots um, and then I do uh, the straps and the a belt buckle well not the buckle the the belt strap that goes around his waist and um, a couple of the straps on the uh, quiver of arrows itself as you will see when I come back onto camera uh, uh, yeah I'm just doing the belt there as you can see and after this stage uh, you can use before you move on to the next stage rather you can uh, use the time to check through see if you need to make any corrections uh, go over any mistakes but um, it seems to be going well um, up until this point so do the axe handle as well I just want that black I don't know why I just fancied having it black just would rather I'm not obviously I'm not going to, to cover the base uh, in this one although I would be doing a, a base coat of probably green so I'm going to put some grass flock down on it but um, there you go there is the uh, model uh, finished with base coating so the next stage we'll be going on will be washes uh, or shades as we will come into so I just want to show you that and here's a, a couple of uh, pictures of the finished model I say finished well, what I mean is finished with the base painting you know what I mean <laughs> so yeah there we go thanks very much for joining me on this episode um, please join me on the next episode where I'll be covering the next stage of painting this miniature uh, which will be washes this miniature has proved very useful for the purpose of doing these uh, hobby one-to-ones because now we're actually coming on we're actually painting miniatures now it's really cool and uh, you know we're starting to see results at last so um, i hope this has been of some help and value to you and um, yeah if you if you want to support me and my channel you can support me on patreon please consider checking that out there'll be a link in the video description below or click on the patreon button uh, that pops up at the end so um, but yeah hope to see you on the next video remember all brushes lead to war and bye for now folks bye bye